building a name for myself and I decided to go and show my face. If you didn't know, he doesn't really post his face much, but Black Bezos. We've got a massive guest on, Black Bezos. On Jeff Bezos called him an op. One thing was that Jeff Bezos tried to sue me. This Circam Limited is connected to Jeff Bezos and they deal with and then that's when I'm typing in on Google, how do I become rich? It's only now that I can come to the realization that I can honestly say, for me, university is not for me. Oh, we're talking I about just after uni. And I just dropped, dropped out. out. It's the 3rd of May, 2022, 46 minutes past four. And I'm, my application to withdraw from university has just been accepted. Remember this day, Faith. Yeah. That's life though. That's but life, anyway. man. I made my decision. Podcasts are going to be the next big thing. And he effectively came to me with this passive income opportunity where he said, look, if you give me X amount of money, I can double it. Double? It, double. Yeah, double. Invest at your own risk. There's two rules for investing. Rule number one, invest what you can afford to lose. Rule number two, to give back is I built my own NFT project. The out. project was a success and we sold out, man, and it was great. That first one that sold out, that just recoup, I uh, recoup some of the funds. Didn't make any money from it. Great things come up. I said, "Hey, let me take a little trip. Let's to go, Dubai, man. Let's go. Let's go." Welcome to Dubai. Whoa. I love when they say, "Habibi, you come to Dubai." Hey, guys. over here in London, in London, you wear a watch. Please look up on the internet right now. The statistics on the number of deaths from knife crime are stark. 17 teenagers have been murdered this year alone. The Metropolitan Police says we are now on track for the highest number of deaths in over a decade. It's, it's, it's almost a pandemic. People are getting there. People are getting stabbed and... and, and, and I mean, not even for our watch. People just, just you wear that jacket, kind of the goose jacket. Really? There was, a, there was a guy that they killed a guy just for kind of the goose jacket. The way for you to just... just Trip up a little bit. You can do good, 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 good. Trip up once, make one mistake, or oh, hellfire. People talk about things, rich people talk about ideas. You went to Dubai, showed your face, NFT, that investment, you flipped your money, whatnot. And then now we're going to talk about the bad. But as we know, in business, not Where there's good, there's bad. Where there's ups, there's, there's downs. downs. The NFT kind of, not kind of, it failed. <laughs> Did you have any haters? Did you have any crazy, crazy, crazy backlash. Social media is not real life and I can't keep saying it. Social media is a facade. People who are doing better than you never hate on you. You need to point a finger to so someone needs to take blame for this. Proof, proof, proof everyone, everyone wrong. wrong. But one thing you need to know about me is I'm never gonna stop. So if you're w wishing on my failures, then please understand that I'm never gonna stop. Until I'm dead, I'm not gonna stop. For right now, you're gonna still keep seeing us winning. But anyway, back to the podcast. Hey guys, I'm Black Bezos. And this is Oz Events. Welcome to the Wi-Fi Money Podcast. The Wi-Fi Money Podcast will be based around finances, so development and so much more. You might have remembered me from the Black Bezos Daily Podcast, number two on the Spotify business charts. Now we're back, revamped on the new name with a visual studio and a co-host with much bigger and better guests. Hello, welcome to the Wife Money Podcast. I'm here with Faith Mabalwanga. Also known as Black Bezos. Hey, okay. I'm gonna talk about the losses, the good, the bad, and, and the, the ugly. ugly. Okay, so um before we even get into uh, the whole scene, the whole story of 2022 and everything, introduce yourself and what you do. So you talk about Wife for Money. Introduce Wife for Money and what's Wife for Money group, what's Wife for Money, yeah. Yeah, yeah lit. So I'm so happy to be able to do this podcast. And as you can see from the intro, I've done my podcast last year and we're basically back for season two. I know a lot of you um, watching this don't know who I am or don't know a lot about me you've see, probably seen my Instagram uh, reels about or my YouTube shorts or wherever you've come from um, but I'm here now to to, to talk about uh, me talk about what I do talk about what um, a bit about my history the good the bad and ugly as as uh, ours or yeah. like, what do you want to go? What, I think what, ours, ours event. Or ours, ours, yeah, ours yeah. event. <laughs> Even though I'm old, and for those who don't know, we'll go in maybe a yeah. bit about why you're called ours event. But anyway, um, yeah, we're here, and yeah, people might know. Okay, what do I do? You know, um, I run this company called Wi Fi Money, uh, Wi Fi Money Group, with a bunch of other people. You're gonna see them. You'll see them around, and it's basically a platform, education platform that helps teaches people, educating people how to make 
money online and there's many different sectors you know you've got the wi family uh, podcast as you can see right here we've got a wi family uh, newsletter free newsletter you and can the go studio check as well that that we're here yeah, right now. you've got a wi family studio where we're here right now where we shoot, shoot short form content yeah we do all sorts of things so um you can check that out there'll be some maybe some uh, bits in between cutting in between to show you but anyway we're not here for all that we're here to talk about me and, and your story and yeah my story just talking about my history just inform people who are watching who don't know about me about yeah what do i do and what's going on in my life and, and whatnot all right let's get into it let's get into it let's enough, get into of, it. enough of talking so first quarter of the year so i'm going through january to march mm -hmm. talk to me on what happened so when the, year, the, the new year came yeah. talk to me about how the journey started from the first day yeah. How do you how do you how do you celebrate New Year's anyways? Like, did you have any New Year's resolution? New Year's resolution. New Year's yeah, let, let, let's indulge in that first. Yeah, so let's talk on the months leading up to um that new year. Oh, so okay, cool. 2021, um, for those who have been following my my journey up until then, I've just been I was just using Snapchat and I went just uh, I was anonymous. So you didn't know my face or you didn't know how I looked like. Um I didn't show that. I didn't want to show any of that because I just thought, you know, I'm more, I'm new to all this. So I just want to stay anonymous. I don't know how people are going to react. Um, I don't know how people are. Yeah. So I just thought, let me not show my face and let me just post. And I didn't really think much of it. I just thought, I'm just posting online, just posting on social media about some of the things that I've learned. I just thought, I'm just educating people on, you know, stock market and uh, a bit about crypto and a bit about, you know, making money because I never got taught this growing up. I thought to myself, hold on. At the school system never taught me this. Growing up, no one ever taught me about taxes, about um, um, savings, about investing. No one ever told me about this. However, the richest people that I'm, the richest people on earth, that's all they talk about. Yet the people around me, they don't talk about it at all. So he just said to me, hold on, if I, the people who are rich, who have freedom, they can do what they want. They, they have the fast cars and they live a nice life and they can go on holiday whenever they want to. They have this freedom, an amazing freedom. Yeah, I'm seeing people around me who are stressing. They're, they're stressing about um, this bill. They're stressing about this debt. But they never talk about um, making money, uh, investing money, taxes. They never talk about it. So I was just talking about that all throughout 2021 on Snapchat, just posting black screenshots. And that's just all I was doing. And as, as the months went by, come um, January the 1st, I decided, you know what? Things were really going on. You know, I was really building, I would say I was really building a name for myself. And I decided to go and show my face. And I just thought, yeah, decided to sh show my face. And it was crazy. Like someone told me before that- What was the reaction? The reaction was yeah. just, yeah, it was a good reaction. Like- Wait, people, how did you first, so how, how did you first introduce your face? Was it like- I just took a Snapchat like this is my face. Okay, or... so to first introduce my face, I went on a bunch of podcasts. Oh, okay. A lot of people, you might, you might just type in Black Bezos on YouTube and you'll, you'll see them there. Shout out to all those guys that want my podcast. I was on all those um, podcasts and you, and uh, yeah, that's how I introduced myself. Okay, cool. And the reaction was great because people saw my energy. People mm -hmm. saw how I am, my body language, you know. People forget that, you, you see, you know, communication is split into three parts. You've got um, body language, um, tone of voice, and um, verbal, the things that you actually say. All throughout 2021 on Snapchat, I was just using um, right. my verbs, my, my li literal text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people forget that literal text or your verbal, the actual, yeah, uh, language that you use that accounts for the lowest amount of communication i think around seven percent your tone of voice accounts for something like 30 40 percent mm -hmm. of of what people say oh. and then body language accounts for 60 percent of communication between human beings yeah, yeah, 60 percent yeah, do you get You're me right. like people don't understand that you know i can say to you you know i can write i can text you a message and say um i'm, oh, I'm go laughing over there yeah. yeah or i'm laughing I could just text you. And you don't know how I'm, how I'm feeling. Just say, oh, go over there. Or I can say, you can just listen on a voice note. Go over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you can see me and be like, go over there. <laughs> and you can see the difference. Or I can just be like, ah, oh, help, me, help me with this. Or I could be like, ah, oh, help me with this, bro. Do you get me? There's the, the, the a difference. Body, like, yeah, body yeah, language is, plays a big, big part. And I think people saw that. And people in the comments were like, wow. I never realized his energy was like this. Like we only saw him behind on, on the thing. And be, and I know you as well. People thought I was an uncle. I was an uncle. <laughs> yeah, I know. So people thought oh, no. I was just some, people just thought I was just some old, old guy. And that wasn't me. So it was good to put a face. Uh, yeah, it was good to put a face to the, 
put a face to the name, yeah. so to speak. It was good, good to put a face, so to speak, to the name. And I had a few, a few highs and lows during then. Um, one thing was that Jeff Bezos tried to sue me. Yeah, explain that because I don't know the fools. I don't know anything. All I know is Jeff Bezos tried to sue you because mm. he used his name or some, whatnot or something like that. Yeah. Wait, explain. So, um, a lot of you don't know, but Jeff Bezos, yes, the real Jeffrey Bezos, C, well, not the CEO of Amazon, but the founder of Amazon, he actually tried to sue me. Um, well, he didn't, he didn't, let me just explain the story. So, um, as I was, as I was, you know, using my name, that black Bezos name, I thought to myself, hold on, I want to make a t-shirt out of this. You know, some people send me, Hey, we'll buy your merchandise. You know, you should make a t-shirt, Faith. You should make a t-shirt, black Bezos. I said, cool, before I'm going to make a t-shirt out of this, but I want a t-shirt trademark. saying black Bezos. Yeah. A t-shirt saying black Bezos. Yeah. Okay. But I thought, or, or just any merchandise. I just thought I'm thinking big. I always think long-term, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a short-term thinker. I always think long-term with everything that I do. I think long-term, I think, Hey, I might make a t-shirt, a business out of this. Hey, maybe I might be the next big thing going around calling myself black Bezos. So one thing that I did learn is when you want to do anything big, especially we live in this digital era, you need to protect your intellectual property. I think that's a lot. Of, that's something that a lot of people don't understand. People understand about protecting your um, physical property. Like life insurance. So, yeah, life cetera. insurance and your properties that you might have. We'll all have our will. People know that if you don't write, on your will, if you don't write where those your house is going to go to, then, it, then, then it's, it's, it's gone. So you have to do the same thing as well with your intellectual property. Um, you know, your, your names and um, videos and, and whatnot. You need to do the same thing. So I thought, cool, let me put in a trademark. For those of you who don't know what a trademark is, a trademark is... Um, best way to explain it is if you've got a logo or a name, it's something that says in the law that no one else can copy this, we're using this. So I can't just tomorrow make a restaurant a fast food chain and call it mcdonald's i can't do that because mcdonald's have a trademark against that name they've said we're the only person that can make a mcdonald's um a fast food chain called mcdonald's however and what happens if mm. someone uses it mcdonald's what happens if someone names the restaurant mcdonald's what happens mcdonald's that? can sue them yeah okay. you get me mcdonald's will f mcdonald's won't straight away sue them first they will say hey we have a trademark for that name you can't use that um, please remove stop, it. remove it. And if you keep Do you doing that, and then... if you keep doing that, then boom, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. If you don't have, if McDonald's don't trademark that name, it's free reign. Anybody and everybody can use that, can effectively use that McDonald's name. So if you wanted to make a new restaurant, um, ours called um, Ours Events Fast Food Chain. I have to trademark it so that no one else market. can use it. And if you don't, I can make a restaurant called Ours Events Fast Food Chain yeah. and there's nothing that you can do about it. However, not to go too much into the intricacies of it, if you did start an Ours Events Fast Food Chain and you were doing it for multiple years and then let's say I came a few years afterwards and made uh, Ours Events Fast Food Chain, you could be like, bro, I've been doing this for years yeah, and years. Yeah, yeah. You understand? But anyway, I digress. Jeff Bezos and why did he see Yeah, Jeff Bezos, yeah. So, I put in my trademark for the Black Bezos name because I wanted to make t-shirts out of it. And I thought, cool, you know, no, no, no issues, no problem. Trademarks in the United Kingdom take three months to get approved. Once they're approved, bam, that's yours and that's yours forever. Anybody who then wants that name would have to take up to court. So I thought, cool, time's going by one month, two months. And then, listen to this, the day before the trademark wow. was about to get approved, the day before I get an email, I'm thinking it's the email. I see an email saying um, intellectual property office in the UK. I'm seeing an email and I'm thinking, yes, you got trademark. my trademark's been approved. I'm thinking, yes. Now, if Jeff Bezos could never sue me, you know, you know, that, you know what? If that trademark, listen to this, if that trademark got approved, it and means that if Jeff, it, not even if you tried to sue me, if Jeff Bezos wanted that name, yeah, yeah, if you tried to sue me, he probably would have to give me a set settlement wow. or something crazy. Yeah, something crazy like that. Yeah, because wow. do you get me? Like, it's that. Bro. You're gonna be clear. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be fucking clear, man. You're gonna be clear. You're gonna be clear. Yeah, wow. Me. Yeah, That's crazy. Me. You're crazy, I know. Crazy, crazy. Um, but yeah, so the day before, I'm thinking, and then I've got the email. Maybe I might put it up if I can. Um, but yeah, I put, uh, day before, get that email. It says, yeah. Um, it says something called, it's called, um, uh, I forgot the company's called. It's called Z I remember Z the email. Yeah. I remember the email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called like Zercam Limited. All I just see is Zercam Limited. I'm thinking, who's this Zercam Limited? And what do they, I didn't know it was Jeff Bezos at the time. I said, who's Zercam Limited? And what do they, what do they have to do with, um, uh, me and, and, and me trying to trademark the word Black Bezos? So I go do my own research. I go on the Google as I always do, because I love doing research on Google, type in Zercam Limited, and I'm starting to research, research, and cut the long story short, I start seeing, I start seeing 
Jeff Bezos' name pop up. And basically, I find out that this Zercam Limited is connected to Jeff Bezos. And basically, Jeff Bezos owns that company and they deal with anything to do with Jeff Bezos and his personal image. So I come to find out it's not just me who's tried to trademark anything to do with Bezos. There's people who have tried to trademark um, Bezos Academy and um, Bezos... Um, education, yeah. Bezos this and Bezos that. Just people just doing random, you know, they just wanted to use the word B-E-Z. Some people even wanted to use the word B-E-S-O-S -S, oh, okay. and he came against them. So I was like, what the hell? And I, I can't lie, me, my ego self, I just thought, you know what, what the hell? Let me just go ahead with this, man. I don't know who these people are, man. It doesn't even look real. It could just be fake. So I just said, let me just go ahead with this regardless. So I decided to go ahead with it regardless and I decided to go ahead with it and, you know, time goes by. Few, they, they, um, the Intelligent Property Office sent me an email and they said, hey, do you want to go ahead with this? I said, I'm going to go ahead with this. I'm going to fight this because I was looking at some other YouTube videos and some other clips and there was one guy in particular who I believe JD, you know, JD, sports brand in UK. Mm -hmm. they, they, yeah, he... Um, he also tried to do um, tried to do a product and JD said no you're not allowed to do that he tried to come against him but he said nah and he ended up winning the case oh, he ended up wow. winning the case against JD yeah so I thought okay JD are big Bezos is big let me try and go against him cool try to go against him a few weeks go by I get a call from his lawyer I get a call from a lawyer in London he goes I'm from this this the the um, I'm, I'm, I'm representing Zercam Limited. I go, you're representing Zercam Limited. Who's Zercam Limited? And he said it like this. He goes, and I acted naive. He goes, Zercam Limited represents the Bezos family. I said, huh? He goes, um, yeah, I've got the recording. I'm going to play it to you. <laughs> Zercam Limited represents the Bezos family. I go, okay. He goes, yes, the Bezos family, um, which represents Sir, Mr. Jeff, not Sir, Mr. Jeffrey Bezos. I go, who's that? He goes, Jeff Bezos. Jeff, he goes, Jeffrey Bezos, CEO, your CEO at the time, CEO of Amazon. I go, I, I did naive. I said, Amazon, Amazon who? He goes, Amazon. I mean, I went, what, Amazon the one where I get Prime from? Prime right say delivery. He goes, yeah. I'm thinking, raw. So I go, what? So Jeff Bezos trying to see, like come against me, come against this trademark. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he is. And I was just like, yo. What the hell? I just tried to act naive, pretending I didn't know who Jeff Bezos was and just tried to act naive just to get, gain information. That's something that you should do, you know, when um when you're when yeah. you're yeah. in a conversation with somebody, don't try to act like you know everything. Let that person say everything, say everything, because there might be something that he might not say. And I basically told him, I said to him, so do I stand any chance of winning this case? And he did, he was doing lots of lawyer talk. He was like, oh, sorry, I can't advise you. Mm. Da, 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 da. But he was basically like to me, saying to me like, bro, look like, yo, like if it goes to, he was telling me like, if you fight against this, yeah, we'll go to court. And he was, and blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, he was like, yeah, all these lawyers will come against you. So long story short, I, I left it. And also one of the main reasons why I didn't Good. fight against it. Let me tell you one of the main reasons why I didn't <laughs> fight against it. I would have still fought against it. The main reason why I didn't fight against it is because they said, if I lost, I would have had to have paid all their lawyer fees. Oh, uh, wow. so, so I said, dead that. Because I already know that then there's some top, top, top lawyers. Like yeah. Five or half a million, maybe. Half, yeah, something ridiculous. So I'm like, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you very much. So I just left that completely. I just left that completely. And yeah, that was that. And now some people might be realizing, oh, how come you still say the name Black Bezos? I mean, as far as it goes, I can still just use the name Black Bezos. I mean, who knows? Jeff Bezos might be watching this and they might be trying to sue me again um, for the name. And if they do, I, 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 listen, I don't care. I'm going to just use it as long as I want. But I, as far as it goes, I can still use it. <laughs> as far as it goes, nah, I can you still... Definitely care. You definitely care. <laughs> you definitely care. You definitely care, Faith. You, if it comes to you half a million, uh, you say, pay half a million, bro. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, no. Like, but but you're not making any money from yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not making any money from it. You're not making, I'm not making money any money from using yeah. his name. Yeah, so I'm going to just still use it. Just like you could, in a sense... Call yourself Ronald McDonald. Yeah. And McDonald's can't actually like as or a nickname. Elon Musk. I could call yeah, myself. Yeah, like, you could call yourself Elon the Asian Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah. As yeah. long as you're not you're not making any money from you're not putting anything official. It's fine. It's okay. But yeah, that's just one of the lows that happened. In terms of the good things that happened, I think it was just uh, uh, like, look, anybody who wants to, um, who's scared or wants to. Let me put it this way. Anybody who has information, I believe that information should be shared. I'm a big advocate for that. And that's one of the reasons why I've been able to build a little name for myself because I've, I'm always the one to be sharing information. I've never kept it 
to myself. And for all of you who are watching this, who also who feel like they have information, I believe you should share it. I love social media. Social media has changed my life. Social media is the reason why I'm here today because I've been sharing information on social media, whether that be about self-development, entrepreneurship, business, whatever that might be. And because of that, I've just been giving value over and over again. And because of that, I've been able to meet so many people along these walks of life. I've been able to, yeah, social media is just so great because you can just put, put information out there. You're giving value, giving value to people and people from all, all, all places and all corners of this earth can, can receive it. I've met so many people on my journey and I think it's just great. And that's what I've just been doing throughout, just throughout all of 2020, 2021. Things really clock for me after the, 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 the P-A-N-D, uh, the pandemic. I don't know if you- Oh, yeah, it. yeah. Will they censor it? Will YouTube censor it on you? If you say pandemic? Yeah, I think they might, they might put like an alert or they might do something. Yeah, they the might school be it, setting. The bacteria. Yeah. The bacteria virus. Yeah, the bacteria virus. Ever, even if you say virus, uh, you know what? We're not going to censor any of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even care. But anyway, ever since the pandemic, things really clocked for me because I was just really, I was just a typical guy. Honestly, just typical. I still, I'm still a typical guy, but I was really typical as in I was just doing, um, preparing for my university exams. Um, what was you studying in you? Talk about, yeah, we're going to talk about university and then your experience with university as well. Yeah, yeah. And we'll why did you drop out? Yeah, I know you we'll, dropped out. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. But I was just a typical guy studying university like many of you probably watching this typical guy studying university um and and the, the the pandemic happened and i'm and then that's when i'm seeing all these things i'm seeing you know you've got to invest because basically i'm seeing this i'm seeing everybody else panicking but i'm seeing rich people say this is the best opportunity to invest best opportunity to invest and i'm thinking what are you talking about and then that's when i'm typing in on google how do i become rich and everyone's saying You've got to invest because everybody invested in 2008. That was the best time to invest and everybody got rich. And then I'm looking now and everyone's saying, this is the next best opportunity to invest. And that's when I'm researching into stocks. And that's when I'm researching into business and entrepreneurship and investing, investing, investing. And that's if you missed the COVID, the, the, the pandemic um, crash or whatnot, right now is still the best time to invest because there's yeah. a recession. recession so a lot is of coming. people are now telling you, oh, save up money, save up money, save up money. Start investing now in the two years time, it'll pay off. It's going to pay off. Absolutely. Two, three years time. It's going to pay off when things go, go back up because never, things never go, stay down. Things will come back up. Obviously we're going through something now, but things will come back up again. But yeah, like I was just looking into all these things that I've seen and I said, I've got to give this information out. I'm not the type of person to keep it in me. I'm always the one to always want to give, 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 give. And if you knew that I learned, I just want to give. I want to do. I'm not one to, a lot of people that have been around, they always want to just, they're, they're lethargic. They're slow. They find something, they find new information out and either A, they don't want to learn about it or even if they do learn about it, they don't want to tell anybody, they don't want to put anybody on. But that's just not me. I've always been the one to put people on and just scream at the rooftops to tell everybody about it. So. And I know, I know that's just been a great, great benefit. And I just wanted to say that if you feel like that, if you feel like you're finding information out and you want to tell it, say it. Use social media. Use Twitter. Make Twitter threads. Use Snapchat. Post on Snapchat. Use Instagram and TikTok, especially TikTok, guys. Come on now. TikTok is the next big thing. Start up your own podcast um, podcast, and do all these different things um, just like I am and just like we are. And just say all this information out, out, out there. I, I, and honestly, it just changed my life and hopefully it could do the same for you. But again, re le re leading up to the 2021, 2022 new year, all behind the scenes. And I just decided, boom, let's do this podcast. And I show my face and just reveal the all, man. And I think it was just great that throughout all of that, where people could put a, na a face to, you know, Jeff Bezos suing me and all the value that I've given and putting people onto different side hustles and making money online. Just like I put you onto the um, making money online, whether that was, you know, re, uh, reselling, um, trading cards, everything. all these things. And you can find out more information on those um, other podcasts. But yeah, everything, everything, we put it on there. We, we just, yeah, everything, man. We put it on there and we're just here building something. And I'm so happy that I was able to put a face to it, man. That's, it was a great moment in my life. I'm just going to talk a little bit about university quickly because yeah. I know a lot of people right now, they're probably watching, probably university, they're probably looking about they make money. They're always saying, oh, but how can I balance university with money and whatnot and family, et cetera? 
why did you drop out and was it hard to drop? So, yeah, why did you drop out firstly? Yeah, why did you drop out? Okay, so... Well, explain, yeah, explain your university, university experience. Yeah. And what made you drop out? Well, my university experience was um, funny. Um, now, I probably can explain it now, but back then I'd say I was, I was a bit embarrassed about it. I, I don't recommend this to anyone, but um, <clears throat> I went to university and honestly, I went in with the, with the hopes of it being, that, that was my main focus. That was number one. University was number one for me, not business, university. I wanted to be a doctor. Since um, 15, 16 years of age, I've always, forever, as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a doctor, follow a passion of medicine. Just like I know a lot of people probably watching this, <laughs> your parents are probably saying, be a doctor, be a lawyer, just that. I said, I wanted to be a doctor. And honestly, I genuinely, genuinely thought it wasn't my parents saying this. It was me. I I, I'm that. I have this type of person personality. I'm all in. I'm go all in or go home. And I was all in doing medicine. I applied to medical school five times year on year. I applied to basically every single university in um, the UK that would accept me. I even looked abroad. I applied to everywhere. Yeah, I applied about five times to univer um, for medical school. I didn't want anything else. People said, oh, you should try this, try that. Well, five times since like you retook the whole uh, yeah, like, year. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like I applied oh. year on year, five different times. That's crazy. Yeah, like for five years straight, I applied for university. That's crazy. That's, yeah. That's like de like dedication. Was, yeah, that, that, that was that, dedication, that, you know. That dedicated to making sure I got to medical school. I was that dedicated. I was not playing about with it. And I did get an offer, but I didn't even reach the grades. And oh. you know what? It's only now that I can come to the realization I can honestly say, for me, university is not for me. It might be for you, but it wasn't for me. Business is always business and entrepreneurship and work and self-development and working for myself has, has been for me. That's the thing that that's been for me. Hey, who knows? You never know what the future might behold. I may go back to university. I never know. Yeah. There might be something there that I wanna, wanna study, but for now, it's not for me. And my university experience, how I realized that was, let's just put it like this. I went to uni, you know, out the gate, September, I was on it. Every lecture, uh, sat at the front, talking to my lecturers. To lecturers <laughs> after after everybody's gone, I'm still talking yeah, to my lecturer, oh my asking for extra work. Extra work, oh, everything. I'm on it. One month in, then I, I start. I found my. I found you the Wi-Fi Money podcast. Then Wi-Fi Money University comes in and reselling and trading cards and reselling tickets and all these different things and I'm going to these events and I'm going to these networking events. So universities start going a bit priorities priority change. for university changes, you know? Priorities change and my heart was just never a uni man. My heart has always been for what I do right now. What I do these things that I do right now, I enjoy it. When people message me and they're like, yo, um bro, even when people message me at uni and what I, I love to reply, I love re responding to people who um they have a clear goal for what they want to do. They maybe want to go down the corporate path. And I love leading them down that right direction. I love telling them, yo, yes, bro, you should be applying for these universities. Make sure you get these great. Because some people have a knack for university. Some people have, have, have um, good academics. Some people have that naturally. Yeah, 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 and true. I always push those people. If you it's should true. be taking full advantage of the education system. If you are naturally good at the education system, take full advantage. I believe that I'm naturally good at some of the things that I do right now. So I take full advantage of them. It's something that I learned called the unfair advantage. There's actually a book about it. Unfair advantage. I believe that we all have an unfair advantage, whatever that might be. And an unfair advantage is something that you do better than the average person, whether that might be academics, whether that might be sports, whether that might be business. There's something that you do you know you do better than the average, but where you don't actually have to try, it's, 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 a, it's a gift, it's a talent that you have. Yes, you still have to work hard, but you're not working hard, or even when you work hard to the same level as everyone else, you're still doing, you're still performing better. And it, in academics, I know you know those people. I know you know those people. That don't who, revise. And then that they don't revise, but they still ace their tests. I know you know those people in sports that look like they don't even try that hard, but they're still banging in goals mm -hmm. in football or soccer, wherever you want to call it. They're still doing great at basketball track, or, and track and field. There's those people who, they just bit more business Gifted, money, yeah. switched, switched on, whatever that might be. And that's that unfair advantage. And there's something I always say, people say, work on your disadvantages. I don't agree. 
Work on your ad advantages and double down on them. Go all out, especially when you're young. My advice to people if you're young is that's what I'm doing and that's what I've seen other people um, who are doing much better than me is they double down on their advantages. Double down on them. Why, if you're great at a particular sport, especially if it's football or tennis, why focus more on academics if that's your weakness? Why not focus more on soccer, basketball, football, go pro? Use that money, use that money to put yourself in a position to buy time and then you can focus on the academics. A lot of people do that. Why not if you're great at academics to fully pursue that, do something with it and then you can pursue your, pursue your passion or hobby in, in that particular sport. That's just my advice. Whether or not you want to take it, it's up to you, but that's just my advice to you. And that's what I did, honestly. And it's paying me dividends now. I went all in on what was doing good for me, everything to do with Wi-Fi money and Black Bezos, everything that was doing good for me. And look, look, I'm, I, I believe, and I'm still going, I'm still pushing. And, and things are doing well for me, uh, by the grace of God, things are doing well for me. And that's, that's where it is. And I just, yeah, I went all in on that. And honestly, I did not want to drop out. Um, and the main reason why I did, I still wanted to believe that I could balance the two. And let me just say this, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Um, everybody's different. There's a lot of people who have been able to go to university and balance business and be successful at both of them. But me, I'm the type of person to go where- Go hard doing one thing. I'm go hard or go home. Yeah. I can't, everyone, everyone who works with me, they know I don't like focusing on two <laughs> things at the same time. I do one thing at a time. So uni was what's working. Uni wasn't working for me and I didn't focus on that. So I decided to go hard on business. And as I was going hard on business, I could just see the um, uni's kind of dwindling away. I didn't want to um, believe, I didn't want to believe that, I, could, I wanted to prove my mum right. I wanted to make my mum happy because my mum, wanted to, you know, um, wanted me to do well in university. My mom wanted me to do well in university and I really wanted to make her proud and hope and- Hopefully you will one day. But the thing is- You will. The funny thing is my mom's st starting to be proud about the things that I'm doing yeah, now. So yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It's good to see that it's my true, mom's true, proud true. about the things that I wanted, uh, that I'm doing now. Uh, but hopefully I do make her proud. Hopefully, yeah. There's something about our University, parents, they graduation just, and pro- they, they, and Yeah, they just want to see you graduate. There's something about them and I get it. Like that's all they know, you know? They just, that's what they believe that's, they believe that's their version of success, you know? Everyone has their version of success. I'll probably, as, as bad as I don't want it, as much as I want my kids to do whatever makes them happy, I'll still want my kids to do big things. But who knows, my kid might just say, you know what, I just want to get a nine to five job and that might then make them happy. And that might be them. And yeah, everyone has their own ver version of success, honestly. And one thing I've come to realize, you just got to be content with that. But anyway, yeah. As I was saying, uni was just going down, uni. down, and yo. But yeah, now we're talking I just about after uni. To, and I just dropped, dropped out, out, man. Yeah. It, that's life, though. That's but life, anyway. man. I made my decision, and then we went hard. I was gonna say, so we, we talked about BB Daily, mm -hmm. and you talked about, so now you're growing, you've built a community. You've built, oh, and, I, and my, uh, we talked about my, my podcast, as yeah. people knew. Um, for those of you who have been following my journey, you might know about my podcast. Black Bezos Daily Podcast. That's one of the podcasts that I also started that took up a lot of my time during uni. And I was just, I, I saw something, you know? I saw two things, two things. I saw A, podcasts were the next big thing. I saw Joe Rogan just got like a $200 million deal from Spotify for his podcast. And I just, podcast, and I see all these different podcasts coming up, um, everybody doing podcasts. And I'm thinking, damn, let me do one. And I saw these people have these great studio setups like we do have, like we have right now. Um, even though it's not even at their, their level, but we have something and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. But I didn't have all of that. Didn't have the money for that. Didn't have the resources for that. But that did not stop me. And I know it stops a lot of people, but that did not stop me. I'm the type of person that said I'm still going to go. And we live in this internet age. We live in this Wi-Fi age where all you need is a phone and you can do everything. And just through my phone, I was able to download an app called, oh, I forgot what the app is, Spotify's, Spotify created an app for those who wanted to start podcasts. And I downloaded the app and I just started recording. Boom. That's it, done. Got my first guest, got, uh, got my first guest who was a crypto. He made a um, bunch of money, almost millions from crypto. Go check it out for yourself. Got all sorts of guests who are making millions from cryptocurrency, um, e-commerce, 
um, business, the corporate world, ju- just everybody, self development, everything, a bunch of everything, literally everything, everything, man. I just got brought all these people on, and yo, it took off, took off to the point where it got to number two, number two on the on the billboard for po- Spotify's podcast billboard for That's business, crazy. and I was also on the actual bill uh, billboard for Spotify all podcasts on oh, Spotify. Wow. Um, I think in the world or in the UK. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember. I knew it was yeah, a big accomplishment. I was like 50 or something. Top two. And he was, he was top one. On the business one, yeah. Stephen Bartlett. Yeah, yeah Dario CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dario the CEO. Massive. I'm coming for him. Yeah, we're, 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 don't we're worry. coming for him. The real world, don't worry. I, I, I look up to him a lot, but then now yeah. I learn what he does. So yeah. I'm All in due cool. time, man. If those of you watching, trust us that we're going to just deliver this good quality content, man, time and time again. But yeah. Um, yeah, it d- did that and it was great, man. It was just great to see. I'm so happy that I did that podcast and I recommend you guys, anybody who's watching this, who's listening, start a podcast. It's great. Whatever um, niche that you're in, whatever that might be, whether that's um, sports that you like talking about, whatever you like talking about, makeup, um, self-development. Anything and everything. A- a- anything. I know th- I- 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 someone was using our podcast studio to, um, last week and they were just talking about um, the she was a woman, and she was talking about the upbringing of South um, South Asian girls. She was doing it with money, and that's just a complete wild ball. And you'll be surprised the amount of people that want to listen to you speak. I've heard religious podcasts, and I don't just I don't just mean like straight religious, like church or a mosque type religious. I mean like. Just your guys, when you guys are just talking about religion or politics, how you just talk, you know, you know, you know, when your guys are just talking, when you're talking mm-hmm. in the group chats, just come, you can even use our podcast studio or, or, or you can just sit down at home. You could just, you don't even have to have the visuals. You can just have the audio, come sit down with your guys, record it and post it up. It's not for other people. It's for you. Who knows? Five years, 10 years down the line, you might want your kids to listen to it. They can listen to it yeah. and they'll be like, wow, oh, is this, see, what, oh, wow, this is what, what my dad was doing? Talking about it. Yeah, man. And that's, that's what it was. So I highly recommend podcasts. Podcasts are going to be the next big thing. We're moving into an age where, look, everywhere you see, everybody's, everybody's got AirPods. Everybody's got earphones. Everybody's on their phone. We're moving into a, you know, Gary V, Gary v said it best. Before, we thought it was on a, uh, a visual age where... You know, we had the smartphones and we had pictures. Now we're moving into an audio age where you've got the Amazon Alexas and the the Googles now. You've got the voice assistants on your phone. You've got the voice assistants on your, um, in your car. You've got the voice assistants. Voice assistants, as soon as you come into your house where you say, turn on the lights, close the blinds. We're moving into an audio age where you've got Zoom. The pandemic showed it best where once people stopped being face to face, now it's audio. That's what we're moving into. A and podcast blew, blew up COVID. because of COVID. And people are consuming audio content like never before. So I highly, highly recommend that you get yourself into it, especially if you're building a brand, a business, a personal image, or just for yourself. Just because we preach business, business. A lot of the things that I do is just because I enjoy it. It's just for myself. So highly, highly recommend you get into that and just do that just for yourself if you have to. Surpass your limits, just like we surpassed um, the Can gym limits today. This guy, he thought that he could only do 22. Yeah, my PB was was 20 kg, something like that. And I would, uh, we went, we went gym, gym this, morning. this morning and we done 28. 28? He thought he couldn't do it. I was, eight, was that pushing you in it. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. This is something but I'm it's, gonna... good. it's all about the... That's, that's, that's just about talking about. It's all about the support system you have. If you have people around you just always aim for the below average or just always go for the bare minimum. You will never progress. But if you have people around you say, you know what, Walid? You're done 20, we're going to do 30 today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you never, your umbrella, you said your mind, expand the mind. So Yes. Expand. And there was a quote you said from the Bible. You said, what was it? Iron sharpens yeah, iron. So why is he, we sharpen each other. So he, he, we, he makes me better. I make him better in Facts. a way. So we just work together. And that's how you grow. It's all about having a support system around you. I think people, for under, people forget that. It's important that people understand that your mind is a muscle. And just like when you go to the gym and you break the muscles down on your arms and then it grows, your mind does the same thing. When you're working on hard, difficult things, 
when you're be, when you're putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, you're breaking down all those old belief patterns that you had before, and then you're rebuilding new ones. When we went to the gym this morning, his old belief pattern was that the max that I can do is 20 kg. And I put him in an uncomfortable situation. And I said, no, you can do 28 kg. I put him in this crazy uncomfortable situation. And then now that he's broken that, that so barrier next in his time, head, next time when I go gym, facts. when I do 20, I'll be like, yes. oh, like, where's this lad? Yeah. You, know what I'm saying? you get me? He's going to start doing 24s, 26s, 28s, and, 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 and whatnot. That's going to be his new normal. And that's the, that's the beauty of self-improvement. That's self, self-improvement in a nutshell, where that becomes your new normal. That's what we mean when we say level up. That's why we do everything that we do here. That's the definition of leveling up yourself, where that 24, 20K, it becomes your new normal, where you'd be making a couple thousand every single month, but now you're making four or five every single month. It's your new normal now. Every single area, level up, not just uh, financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, in all different areas. And I also wanted to touch on, as you were saying that iron sharpens iron, but the importance of, as he said, the support system. And you'll hear me talk about the only reason why I'm here right now is because I had a great support system around me. And, and I have something that I hear from other people, the importance of having your tribe. Something that I want to let people know right now is you need to find your tribe. You need to find your pack. You need to find at least one person who's on the same things that you're on, the same mentality. They want to go not the exact same place, but similar to where you want to go at least. It could be the exact same place, but similar. Everybody in our circles is similar. They, wanna go to they all want to go into a similar freedom. place. Yeah. So they all, we all want to go to a, a similar a similar place where we all want to either, whether that's you want to, where you want, whether you want financial freedom, whether you want time freedom, whether you want to look after your, 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 your family members, whether you want to be able to go on holiday, wherever you want to go, wherever you want to provide for your loved ones, wherever that might be, all of these things involve getting your money up. Simple yeah. as that. Because even though, as the quote says, money doesn't make you happy, what money does do is it buys time. And with time, you can use that time to find things that do make you happy because it's simple as that. Please. I, I personally do not believe in that quote. Anyone saying that money doesn't make you happy because it, it's, it's not true. What money does is it, as I said before, it, it buys the time to, and you can use that time to eventually make you happy. So that's what we say. But as I said, find your support system, find your tribe, find those people that are going to a similar position to you get a network. Look, we live in this place. We live in an age where you don't need to ask your next door neighbor or you only know people in your local area. We live in an internet age. You need a network. You need an online network. Um, yeah, you need an online network. We have that. You don't have to use ours because I didn't use ours at the beginning. We never had ours. There's many. I was just using um, social media, just replying to people's comments. And I just say, oh, hey, bro, I can see you're on the same stuff that I'm, I'm on. Message them in the DMs. I joined different Discord networks. We've also created a network called the Wi-Fi Money Club. So essentially the Wi-Fi Money Club, like Faith said, is a network. So you don't know. So people might, a lot of people I talk to struggle like, okay, Cool. I don't know many people that that are the same level as me. I, they might their friends might not be the same mentality. They will talk about podcasts. He, they he, he, you might want to learn about podcast uh, mentality, books and whatnot. And to have like you want to have like a support system, like we talk about a support system. The Wealth Money Club is essentially that we give you guys the support system for me, Faith, and the other members of Wealth Money team. And we also give you business mentality, so we teach you. Okay, cool. Get to see behind the scenes. You get to learn how business really operates. That's what essentially what Money Club is. It's essentially a, how can I say? It's essentially like a community, like a like a new city, like an online city, like a queer, like an online village. Like Maybe on one day, Monday we'll get into the the what's the word? The meta, you know that metaverse. Which one? You know the metaverses. You know the metaverse. Yeah, the metaverse. Yeah, the yeah, Facebook yeah. one. We will have a Wi-Fi Money Club in the metaverse. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. NFTs, non. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it would just be sick. It would just be like a. It's like an online digital. City, that's what, that's what mm, we call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, more, more wins, more wins that we went through. <laughs> Should I carry on? Yeah, no, we, we finished, we finished. Finish. So, basically, this is, so yeah, we talk, we talk about plenty of wins, we talk about yeah. plenty, plenty, plenty of wins. Yeah, now that you bought the community, you build an audience for yourself. Faith. Mm. Have you ever thought about capitalizing that? Okay, cool. It doesn't matter if you have half a million followers, if you're not making money from those half a million followers, 
then he's nothing. He's just nothing so now you've got these followers, you've got these, um, what are they called? Audience, community. You yeah. Built, you built a community. I built a community for myself, yeah. Have you ever thought about creating something which you can sell to them uh-huh. and make money? Yeah. There's, I'm going to talk about two ways, which again, I'd call them wins. These were double use in my life, where two ways where, one, where I tried to give back um, as a W, I tried to give back. And one situation where I also received good things because of the thing, because of what I built for myself all throughout 2021 under the Black Bezos name. So um, let's go for the, how, how something came to me. So, um, uh, yeah, so let's talk about how something came to me. So this was an investment, passive income. A lot of people, um, yeah, anyway, this is an investment, passive income. A lot of people, I don't know how to put this. A lot of people, they, 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 they saw your fame. They saw all of this and said, cool, how faith is a great, is a great asset. They saw it as an asset. Yeah. So say, cool, they, they came to for investments, projects, okay, invest, yeah, yeah, invest. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. everyone does. Yeah, as I was saying, throughout the whole year, I was so used to just giving, giving, always giving, giving to people. And then as my notoriety starting to increase, people would start hitting me up for opportunities. And this was always, this was really fresh to me. People were hitting me up saying, hey bro, we can do business together. That's, that's a, as again, I touched on that before. Give value and you will receive value in return. Yep. A lot of people talk about how do I network? How do I find opportunities? But you know, if you can give out value, you'll be surprised to find that the opportunities will come to you. And in one particular instance, I had one opportunity that did come to me which was a passive income opportunity where somebody who I knew and I'd known him throughout that whole year, he was doing trading on uh, crypto. He was doing crypto trading and I knew him throughout that whole year. And uh, crypto and yeah, crypto forex trading. And I knew him throughout that whole year. And he t- told me, hey bro, I've got this passive income opportunity where I can effectively flip your money. And I was all new to all of this. So I'm just thinking, I was new to, you know, having opportunities come to me because throughout my whole life, and I've been doing business ever since I was young, from 16, 17 years old, I mean, 15 even, I've been selling sweets and chocolates at um, secondary school. But this was the first, and every single time I did a business, I'd always have to go out. I would always have to go out and find those opportunities. When I did sweets and chocolates, I had to go out and find the opportunities and go to people and sell to people. I did a leaflet reselling business after that, where I'd, uh, put leaflets into letterboxes mm. for um, different businesses. Yeah, I was That's doing it. Sick. Yeah, so I basically went to this chicken shop. He 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 gave me like how much? He was giving me like three pound for like uh, or five pound for like a hun- per hundred leaflets. Oh. And then I thought, okay, three five pound for hundred leaflets. It takes me about an hour to do these hundred leaflets. So what I decided to do was I started to employ bare people because I said let me go to different oh. chicken and chip shops. So I had about and obviously I couldn't do like. 20. But how did you know that you used to give out the leaflets? Can you just da- dash them away? What he said was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to video them. I used to put a body cam- okay. camera. I used to take a video. And he also knew like, um, he also, what's he called? He also knew if he got orders from different places, you would know. You know, that means he has to go orders. If he didn't get orders, it means he didn't, didn't, didn't get leaflets. But yeah, I did this recent reselling business and I tried, to sc- I, sc- I tried to scale it. So like, instead of I was the only person, I employed different people mm. and then they would, they would um, put those leaflets in uh, uh, letterboxes and I'd be giving them like, you know, like a cut and then I'll take my mm. cut. Yeah, I tried that too. Did drop shipping, e-commerce. Every single time it was me having to go out and search for those opportunities. But this was the first time where someone came to me with an opportunity that would do astronomical figures. And he effectively came to me with this passive income opportunity where he said, look, if you give me X amount of money, I can double it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Double. Double, yeah, double. So if you give me 5K, I'll double it to 10K. And, you know, initially, just like anything. And wasn't it, wasn't like red, but like red signals, like this red is flags. too good to Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, the thing is, if it was anybody random, if it was oh, anybody this random, this was somebody that I knew. Oh, okay. If it was anybody random, I would have said, nah, too good to be true. But this wasn't someone random. This was somebody that I did see. I saw him on his come up. I saw him gradually um, d- uh, doing more. Honestly, it was like you saw him on his comments. Are like you asking me for money and saying you're going to double it? But I've learned my lesson now and I know how I'd go more into it. But I saw him on his come up. Man was from nothing. He was even saying how like he was on his like last. He was like, on, on, he lost like, a thousand pounds of his parents' money and yeah, he lost a thousand pounds of his parents' money and he came straight to me and said, bro, what should I do? And I told him, come off the trading. You need a mental break. You need an emotional um, break from that. And he came back 
he took a little break, came back and he must have run it to like 100K. Wow. And he took advantage of the crypto markets that were doing well doing well during that time. And he ran it up disgustingly. And I remember the day when he, made, he must have made like a trade of like 30K in one day. He went out and he went shopping. He went Burberry, Dior. Wow. He was buying Bear Drip, oh my LV. Days. Yeah. All that, would have been, that would have been like crazy for you to look at. Yeah. Like, cool, like, He's asked me to put double my money and he's doing this. Obviously, it must be yeah. legit. It must be... You can't must have been it. legit. L like, you can't fake it, really. The me now would have never have invested seeing all that. I would have said it's a facade. But the me back then, being all new to that, I said, okay, I'm putting two and two together. As you said, I put two and two together and I've said, Ooh. yeah, it all makes sense. It just all makes sense. I put two and two together and I said, yeah, it all makes sense. So... Yeah, it all makes sense. So I decided, cool. Um, let me put my invest. money. Yeah, let me invest into it. And did I you flip it? Did that actually work? You flipped it. Oh wow. Okay. You so, flipped it. Yeah. So it worked. It, it worked. Did you get greedy and put more? Yes. Oh my ah, god. This, this, listen, is, this is where it gets wrong. And and shout out anybody who look learn try and learn from my mistakes. Learn if you want to get ahead in life. Something that I always say: if you want to get ahead in life, and something I've learned from other people. If you want to get ahead in life, learn from other people's mistakes. That's the fast. If you want to get to places fast and quickly, learn from other people's mistakes. And That's please, how books are created, so you can yeah. learn from other people's mistakes. Yes. And learn from my mistakes. Learn from my mistakes. Don't get greedy. Especially chat to all you traders out there, make a good trade, make a crazy trade, take it and run. I wish I took that, that, that flip I and I ran. Took it. I wish I took it and ran. But I got greedy, man. I got greedy. I decided to put more of that in and I, I went, all right, cool. Once I put that in, I'm going to- What happened to that money that, that you put in? What happened to it is excuses, oh, excuses. Okay. And it was supposed to come back to me in a month's time, but it was nowhere to be seen. And time just went got by and by and by and Why by. I was doing that was, did you tell anyone else or did you just skip it to yourself? Yeah, because from my point of view at that moment in time, and obviously I wish I never did that then, but from my point of view, from that moment in time, I thought to myself, hold on, I flipped it. This worked for me. Why would I keep this information to myself? Let me go tell my friends. So. Told, told, told my friends, I said, hey, look, I put this money into this guy. I put it into the... Mind you, he also had other people that he was going through that um, he also did it for other people. It was working for them. So it wasn't just me. I also had, you know, people that I didn't know, like mutuals, you know, it was going well for them. I'm like, all right, cool. So like, there's many people who know about this guy who are doing this. People know where he it's lives. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Let me tell other people. Let me put people on. Told a few of my friends. Told a few, uh, two of my friend, a few of my friends, um, about him. Um, told him, yo, I put my money in, made it back, and yeah, you could do the same thing for you, man. Great opportunity. Then, like, yeah, this is great. Thank you so much, Black Bezos. Thank you so much, Faith, um, for putting me onto this and 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 whatnot and and whatnot. And one thing that I'm happy I did for uh, for some of my friends who did come is one thing I did realize is that I realized I need to make a contract because people people are not. Um, investing into that guy because of um, because of him. They're investing, they're investing because, of because of me. They're investing because of me. So I'm happy that I put it put it down on paper for. And I put it down on paper and I said, yeah, on paper, on writing, made them sign it, and I said, yeah, if you lose your money, um, if you lose your money, I'll reimburse it. And I thought, to me personally, I wouldn't do that because I, I know you uh, um, uh, invest at your own risk. Yes. If you lose, it's not my fault. But I, I know. told you about him. That's what I would have done. But I know, yeah, I know. So. And yeah, like anybody who needs to know, if you invest into somebody, you invest at your own risk. Like, like that's, that's one big thing I think realize now that when you're investing, too, <laughs> too many people now, they want to, you know, a lot of people don't like taking accountability, accountability mm -hmm. for themselves mm -hmm. and they want to pass the blame onto yep. anybody. But people need to understand that anywhere you put your money into, you need to, do your own research, please. If, a lot of people ask me every single day, hey, what should I invest into? What should I invest into? And one thing that I have to say is that if you're going to invest, please do your research into whatever investment that might be. And some people, when they talk about investments, they only think about money. I even say time. Time is a bigger valuable asset than money. If you're going to invest your time into people, into projects, Please do your research into what you're investing into. A lot of you are going to university and you don't even know what you're going to university for. Do your research into what you're doing. A lot of people are going to business with people, uh, uh, with people or into certain industries and you don't even know the industry. 
do your research because if it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. And you talk about university and, and you talked about um, not knowing about the, the, the course. That's what, that's what there's work experience. That's what work experience is put in play. That's what internships are put in place so that you can do your own research before getting into whatever course you're doing at university or whatnot. So yeah, apply the same principle to everything, not just university, apply it to business, finance, entrepreneurship. That's supposed to be the practice. That's supposed to be, be the practice. You're supposed to have a practice run. One advice that I'd like to give to anybody watching this, before you invest into anything, have a practice. Okay, you want to invest 10,000 into this project, business, stock, practice. Put 500 pounds into there, put a thousand pounds while you're learning about the company before you start, before you go all in. Please put a little, then put 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 um a lot in. Put something that you're okay losing. Put an amount in there that you're like, if I lose this amount, it's okay. Do you get me? It's fine. It's calm. That's it's good. rule number one in like yeah. investing. Rule number rule, rule, rule number, number one. one. Rule number one is invest what you can afford. With invest what you can afford. To, there's two rules for investing. Rule number one: invest what you can afford to lose. Rule number two: follow rule number one. Simple. Uh, make sure you invest what you can afford to lose. But yeah, as I said, if I was to look back now. Um, anybody that, if I was to put anybody onto a certain opportunity, A, I'll tell them, yo, invest at your own risk. And yeah, I wouldn't do any of that. But I'm still happy that I did make that contract because, or else, if, if I did say to them, hey, bro, invest at your own risk, invest at your own risk, they could've, I could have lost a friendship out there. You get me? True. I could have lost a friendship. And I'm happy that, we, 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 that, that you see, that, people need to understand that when it's business, it's business. And when it's friendships, and friendships. And if you can separate, if you learn how to separate the two, everything will be calm. And because I learned to separate the two, and I mean, when it was business, we made a contract and everything was cool. I'm still calm. When it's friends now, it's still calm with those guys. I, I can go out with them, eat with them. We're good. You get me? Because we knew what, what, friend, what the friends business is, business. it's calm. But bi when it comes to business, I paid them all back. It was business. Do you get me? Uh, there's, there's no there's no you know there's a thin line you know between business and friendship and it, as long as you can manage the two of that i think that's good that's i'm i'm, I'm happy that's something that 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 learn um simple as that that's it, simple really? as that that's it but anyway yeah so uh, and and finally and I, was, and I was also gonna just add that a way that i leveraged what i built to give back is i built my own nft project wow. um yeah, I was literally just about to talk about that. yeah 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 so i decided hey i i, I um i learned something i learned um, about NFTs. NFTs were cooking up during that September, October, November time. And yeah, September, October, November time. Started learning about a little about NFTs. Had a friend of mine. He made like, a, let's just say a lot of money from NFTs. A lot of money from NFTs. And he was like, yo, bro, like, let's make an NFT. Like, you, um, you've got your community. You've built it up. Yeah, you've got your community and you've built it up. Why don't you make an NFT? Why don't you give back? Uh, pardon me. A lot of people, they... They wanted something that they could, you know, buy off me. Just like why people buy T-shirts off people. It's because you want something, that you, ownership. You want something that you can say, that's yours and I'm supporting. I know a lot of people, they wanted to support me. So that's why I decided, hey, let me give back. Let me make an NFT project. And I, I decided to go, um, go in, in, in with it. I decided to put my own capital up yeah. on the line. Because I looked at it. I did a little bit of research. And on the business aspects, I said, hey, a lot of NFT projects, they make money. A lot of them are making money. Like, of course, you're going to have to, just like any business or project, you're going to have to, if you don't have investors' money, I didn't have um, prior investment, put my own money on the line, um, put, put, my, put, put my own on the line in, in the multiple five figures into marketing, paying staff, story writers, um, smart contract developer, because I didn't know anything about any of these things. And one lesson I have to teach you in business is that, if you don't know something, you're going to have to employ other people who know it better than you. You cannot do everything by yourself. You have to- Delegate. Yeah, you have to delegate responsibilities to people. A lot of, re a lot of the reasons why some people's businesses are not expanding or it might not even just be business, just, just generally in self-development. The reason why you're not expanding, you're not growing as a business or as a company is because you're- you, you, you believe you can do everything by yourself. Simple as that. You can't trust people to do things for you. And the moment you don't do that, you're going to just stay as small as where you are. And I'm so happy that I've now grown this company and people are doing many different things. If I'm doing what I need to do, other people are doing what they need to do. And it's all important for the end goal. It's all important for that end goal. It's like a, uh, a bit like a pyramid, I guess. And if one person's not doing, if I'm not doing, it will affect somebody else. So everybody has to play their part. So yeah, this was the, actually the first time 
that I went into this kind of project where, you know, I'm employing these different things into something that I don't really know too much. And, and yeah, I, and I didn't know too much about it. And that's why I employed. And I wish, as I said before, again, I didn't really learn much about my investment because I should have learned way, 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 way more about just about the investment. But anyway, let's just carry on talking about the good and we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll talk about how, um, I'll talk about how. Talk about how you sold out the peach project as well and like beef. 15 minutes or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get to that. I just said that <laughs> later on, I'm going to talk about how the importance of, even though, yeah, you might delegate responsibilities, but it's important to know that you need, to, it's important to know. <laughs> Milo. Uh, uh, no, because then I'm just looking at it. Yeah. Um, we're in a studio, man. It's a live studio. It's, everyone's here. But I was just saying that it's important. Uh, even though it, it, it comes to business, business that even though you might delegate responsibilities to everybody else, it's important that you do know what you're talking about in each of those things. So I'm going to just talk about that uh, later on. But anyway, cut a long story short, invested multiple five figures, um, had somebody, uh, a business partner with there with me, who knew most about it, let him um, run a project, gave him a large percentage because I just said, look, if I'm going to just be the uh, marketing this, give him a percentage and... Um, I'm going to be the face of this and the brand of this and I'm going to employ all these different people, story writers and all these things like that. And I said, cool. And then we're going to just uh, run the project. And then cool. Cut a long story short, as as um, Oz was saying, sold the project out. was a success and we sold out, man. And it was great. And like, I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget when I was in that office, man. And just sold out of that project. Mm -hmm. Sold out in 15 minutes. And honestly, I didn't think it was going to sell out. I fully, 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 fully did not believe that it was going to sell out at all. And I'm just so happy that I planned something, put the people in place, spent my money, executed, and I, and I made my money back. And that was only the first... Um, How long did it take you to build the Peach Project? It took me like four, six months, seven, eight, eight oh, months. Oh, wow. Yeah, seven months or something like that. Yeah. When did you start it? I started it properly. September was um, Inception. Oh. Inception. Oh, cool, 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 inception cool. was September. Inception was September. What's, what's Inception for those that, that, that don't know? Oh, like the star. That's the when the first idea came. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. I thought it was an NFT thing. NFT no, no, thing. no. <laughs> nah, cool. Inception anyway, was then. Yeah. And then that was when the project sold out. And we had three parts of the project. That was just the ID card drop. There was two other parts. To, the the to nodes the, and something. No, no, no. We were supposed to have two more drops. That was just like a... Um, early, for the early founders. Like early founders. Then there was going to be two, two more... Um, two more releases. Two, two more releases. And... Those were the ones that were going to put into profits. That first one that sold out, that just recouped, uh, uh, recouped some of the funds. Didn't make any money from it. Just recouped some of the funds, uh, made our money back. But it was able to pay out because some people were on a percentage basis. So, for example, the way smart contract developers work is that they take a percentage. A lot, uh, the artist who was on there, he took a percentage. Uh, people who were working on it, they all took their percentages. So when the money came in, they took their percentages. Um, but I put everything, all my money in, into the project. Oh, wow. So whatever was in there, I left it in there. And didn't make any money from it, but we'll talk about what, what happened why, to, it, what happened to, that, what happened to that, that 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 project afterwards. But that was that man, and it was great man. Pete project, um, passive income investment because I doubled it. I know I talked about how it passive income investment doubled it. Um, showing my face, podcast, a lot of good stuff. Happened. A lot of a lot of good stuff great, happened. And then he celebrated. How did you celebrate it? How do you did did you even celebrate it? Was it just work, 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 bro? You, you have to set me I work under the pretense of when you work hard you have to celebrate man mm -hmm. work hard um, what's it called work hard party harder play, like, harder. Work play hard, harder play hard work hard play hard I love enjoying like I might look like I'm serious serious all the time but man me I love to enjoy and I don't work all this hard not to have a little bit of fun from time to time so absolutely work hard play even harder so I decided to go to Dubai and before I went to there, I was at my, when I was at my old office building, there was, um, I was in this shared office space and there was a guy there at my shared office space. And he would always tell me, oh, I would always bring up Dubai. He, I'd always say, oh, Dubai looks good, looks good, isn't it? And he would always say, you have to go to Dubai, Faith. He goes, yeah, like this is, he, he was really <laughs> exaggerated. Like he was like, yeah, ha you may remember me, you may. Who? Uh, that guy from the old office, from the other office. From Louis building. Is it that, that Asian brother? No, the black guy. Probably, probably, I, I, I've probably seen him, but yeah. But he would always say to me, yeah, I have to go to Dubai, Faith. You have to go. And I say, why? Why do, why do I have to go to Dubai? He goes, he goes, safe and the mentality 
and everything. And I was like, what do you mean? Talk to me on safety. And he said that in Dubai, there's, he said that there's literally no other country as safe as Dubai. He said that you could literally have a Lamborghini or Bugatti Veyron, leave the car door unlocked and nothing would happen to you. I said, what? He said that you could have a Rolex watch, leave it on the table at a coffee table, come back the next day and it would still be there calmly. He said that you could leave your, your house door unlocked. And talking about what I said before about limiting beliefs, when he told me all that information, I said to him, first thing I said to him is you're a liar. Because you, you were trapped in the system. You were trapped in a bubble, in a I, way. I, I, was in, I was in a, yeah, I was under a worldview where what he's telling me is absolutely baloney. I, I live in a place where you cannot leave your car door unlocked. Forget a Lamborghini or a Bugatti. You leave a Peugeot, Volkswagen, thousand pound, thousand dollar car, it will get robbed. You leave, forget a Rolex, you leave any watch on the table, it will get robbed. 50 you leave pound watch, will 50 get, pound get. robbed, you're not see. you know, we live in a place where you leave your phone on a, you leave your phone on, the, on, 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 on um, in the Uber. I left my, I left my wallet in the Uber the other day. Left it, it's, it's, it's just gone. Just, it's just, it just, it's Someone gone. Someone stole my trainers. Someone stole my, my user trainers at the gym. And I was, and it was, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if, it was, I used to go, I go to David Lloyd's, and it was some Yeezy 500. David Lloyd as well. David Lloyd. No, you have to pay some crazy amount of money. I was like 200 pounds a month. And I left my, I went to have a shower, like you do. I went to have a shower, came back. I left my shoes in there, my bag in there. I came back, both my shoes were gone. Both my shoes, not, not, not yet, yeah, a pair of my shoes were gone. I didn't even wait for 24 hours. They were what? fresh. Oh, they were fresh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did they know white, they were fresh? Someone uh, knew they were fresh. Ah, uh, no, they, they were with white trainers, the white Yeezy 500. They were absolutely fresh. And then they, they, let, they took my socks as well. I oh. had no socks. I had no, I had no socks. <laughs> they took my socks and my trainers. This, I could not believe it. This is where we live in. This I is, could not believe it. This is where we live in. So when somebody is telling me that if I leave my car door unlocked and I leave my watches, it won't get started, I have to just say, you're a liar. And he kept telling me over and over. And I kept telling him as a liar. And I kept telling him, bro, I don't believe you. And I'm the kind of person where I don't just talk, talk, talk. I have to go, seeing is believing. I have to go figure this out for myself. So the opportunity arose where after the, that sold out, after my, my podcast reached number two, after all these great, 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 um, great thing, great things come up, I said, yay, let me take a little trip. Let's to go. Dubai, man. Let's go. Let's go. And let me just tell you, Dubai is everything that they say <laughs> is and more from my first visit there. Um, I'm trying to go to Dubai. I'm trying to go to Dubai. You know what I mean? I'm trying to go to Dubai. I've never been. Oh, we need to go there. We'll I, go. I, I, I've never been to we'll Dubai. I've never been to America. We'll yeah. Hey, we're going America. soon, soon. America's lit as well. Shit, I should talk on America one time. America's <laughs> fucking lit as well. Anyway, everything and, and being a more safety, bro. Like, I, I remember this one time. I remember this one time. Um, I was with an entourage of mine and, and I remember when um, somebody, somebody was, somebody was um, what's it called? It? Valet drivers. Couldn't believe it when I saw a valet. You'd be like, and the entourage with me, they had nice cars. Someone had a G-Wagon. Gave the keys to the valet guy and he and he went to go park it. And I just and the park the parking spot was far away. I just saw the guy go vroom. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. whoa, he stole the car. I thought he stole the car. <laughs> and somebody went, relax, relax, relax. We're in the bay. We're in the bay. And I'm thinking, what do you mean by that? He's like, don't worry. And like, and like everybody was just everyone's just so easy, so chill. And it's like, um, yeah, everyone's just so easy and chill. Like, nothing is robbed there. Everyone wears their watches. Everyone wears their expensive watches. Over here in London, in London, you wear a watch. Please look up on the internet right now. It's, it's, it's almost a pandemic. Pa a pandemic, sorry. People are getting there. People are getting stabbed and... and, and, and no, even for our watch. It could be just, just that you wear a jacket, kind of the goose jacket. Really? Uh, there was a guy that they killed a guy just for kind of the goose jacket. A kind of the goose. He was wearing, he was wearing a kind of goose and, and they killed him. And somewhere like in London, yeah. Me, I have no pride to my materialistic items. Me, uh, everything that, everything, every, every time I walk out, I'm, I'm under the pretense. I've, I've been in some sticky situations and I've always said to the people, the perpetrator, here, t t bro. Take it, I don't care. Like, take it, because you can always, it's materialistic. I don't care. I'm Remember? not, in this life, I'm not dying over Canada yeah, Goose, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm no not way. dying over Louis Vuitton, man. Please, I'm not dying over that, man. We've got things to build out here, man. But I love yeah, that. No, that's cra yeah, it's crazy. But people. I love that in Dubai. I love that in Dubai that you can wear what you want to wear, do what you want to do, and you're safe. And the people, the mentality, and 
the people and the mentality are just so great. Everybody there is so friendly. Everybody there it, it has this mentality of they want to level up. A lot of people there are business. They do businesses and companies and whatnot. And they all just want to level up. And I think that's sick. And it's the kind of place where I want to be around. Everybody here wants to level up. There's no negativity. A lot of people from the UK would like to say, UK is bad vibes. Maybe from your own hometown or country. A lot of people in Europe, I know that you also think the same way. Bad vibes where you're from. People don't really want to see you win. Even some places in America, I know. It's bad vibes. They don't want to see you win. Especially from the UK, guys. Spe <laughs> oh, especially the UK. A lot of my people here, well, a lot of people watching this right now, a lot of people watching this right now, they just bad vibe, just bad vibe. They just don't want to see you win. The way for you to just, just trip up a little bit. You can you. do good, 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 good. Trip up once, make one mistake, or onto hellfire. You. Or hellfire. They're onto you, know, you. They're onto you. You know, when I went to Dubai and when I went to, even when I went to America, if you brought up any kind of negativity, it just got shut down quickly. Uplifting, it, they're uplifting. Yeah, and if you try to bring a negativity, they're just, like, they're just, they're they're just looking, looking at you weird. They're just looking at you weird. Like, yeah, 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 just stop that, in man. Here, if you speak of negativity, they're doing kind of like, yeah, like, yeah. Do, people jump, people get in a group like this, mm. they'll talk about other people. Yes. Look at my America, put them in Dubai, they'll look like, look this guy, like, this is low life. Do you know yeah, saying? you're a low life. Yeah. Even in our circle that we built here, here in Y Family, if someone came here new and started being negative, bro, they're out. They're just out. Like, we don't, no one wants to be friends with you. Nobody wants to hear from you. All you are is just negativity. If someone, while he brought his friend over here and he just started speaking negativity, I'll tell the guy to go. Get out. Go even home. Even me, even me, I was to get out. Go home. Because all you, you're just bringing a negative vibe over here, bro. Like, we don't want any of that. Even, and, 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 and if, 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 over here, when people make mistakes here, yeah, we get onto you, but then we say, okay, now how can you improve on that mistake? It's not just, oh, no, 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 negativity, negativity, negativity. It's, you've made negative, you've, you've done something negative, but how? How can you improve on that? That's that's what we do here. And yo, that's what Dubai is like, man. I love when they say, Habibi, come, come to Dubai. Dubai. Hey, I like it. Hey, I, I, I love it, man. So many fun things to do there. Dubai and lit, even e and everything about the Dubai is welcoming. Bro, even at the airport, they, they just come. Come, come. Everything just come. There's no long, lengthy airport mm. process. It's just come, come, come. Zero tax. Come. They want you to set up your business here. They want you to... to, to they, because they, it benefits them. Yeah, it benefits them. They want you to set up your business here. They want you to set up your companies here. They want you to work here. A lot of people have, have come from all countries in the world and now they work in Dubai. They want you to come. They want you to build property there. Everything is welcoming, welcoming, welcoming. Come, come, come. There's literally so many... Um, Property expos just where I live. They 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 the uh, Dubai people and you can um there's expos. What's the what's the what's Dubai Expo? No, there's like a there's something here in in, in Birmingham where like um Emar and they, oh. some of the, they 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 come showing off their properties. Oh, okay. they, yeah, you go okay, there okay, and they okay, show okay, off okay, and they're like, okay, okay, come okay. In, invest, oh, okay, invest, cool. yeah, cool, 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 all cool. sort of things, man. It, it's 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 fantastic, man. And yeah, anybody who's watching this, no matter where you are in the world. Once, you just have to go to the bar. Just once, whether you might like it or not, because I know there's a lot of people who have been there, they say they don't like it, it's too, it's too city. I'm, a, I'm personally, I'm a city boy. Me, I like the big city. I like big city. I, I, not that fast-paced lifestyle, but I just like big city, man. You know what? I like the fast-paced lifestyle. I just mm. like, bu I like busy. I like when people are working, getting busy, building, creating something. I'm not really for all the chill, chill. Maybe, yeah, there's times and periods for that, but that's just me. So no, it's not for everybody. But regardless, if you think it's not for everybody, you should go there once in your life. Just go there once, man. Go there once. You're and honestly, you're talking about, you you talking about the groups. And then there was a quote that you said. He said, the poor talk about, the poor talk about things. The rich, the rich talk about ideas or something. Like when I went to Dubai, like. one thing that I realized is that nobody there cares about drip. Or, I mean, the most that people really, like, over there, over here, over here in other Western countries or in the UK, I can only speak for myself. Pull up in a, pull up in a, forget a Lamborghini, just pull up in a, uh, Mercedes. Uh, a Mercedes. A class. A class. A class. Even, yeah, an A class, C class, anything nice, E class. People start chattering, chattering. People start talking. Whether good or bad, people just talk. A lot of talk. Whatever you might put, get a new fancy watch, pe pe people talk. And I mean just the basic Rolex, people will talk. Get a new apartment, people will just talk. Good or bad. But what I found out in Dubai is that pull up in your new, you know, um, G Wag. Ferrari. And yeah, people will be happy for you, but it's like, okay. Normal. Normal. Normal, like, yeah, all right, cool. All right, cool. You have your Rolex. Well, like, I never really saw people compliment watches like that. Like, everybody had a Rolex on. It's just, it's just a norm. And what people would talk, what people talk about more is ideas there. And that's where, I, and that's where that quote comes in. Poor talk about things, rich people talk about ideas. Over here where I live, 
Everybody likes to talk about things. What new watch have you got? Oh, what holiday are you going to go on to? Oh, what new clothes? Drip, drip. Clothes that you wear. Drip is clothes that you wear and, and stuff like that. The new clothes. The Louis Vuitton, the Gucci, the Prada, the new shoes you're going to wear and whatnot. That's what people talk about here. But in Dubai, people are talking about ideas. And that's why, I, that's what's so good about it. I think it's just so great. And that's a bigger mentality. That's that rich mentality. When you talk about things like what's the next thing that you're going to build what's the next thing you're going to create and i love being in that environment and i believe that's the environment that you want to go in that, that you need to be into amazing that was a great point you said there faith right thank there you, and i've definitely you. learned something new over there that i love that quote the poor talk about things the rich talk about ideas. i love that i love that i can't lie to you i love that bro thanks um it's not mine by the way but it's a good quote is it do you know who's it from Mm -mm. oh all right <laughs> but now it's yours now nah, my quote that. is google it because Google is my best friend yeah, and YouTube Google, is my university. Google that quote. That's Google my that quote. quote. That's my Google quote. Google that quote. Well, okay, cool. So we'll talk about the good. We went to Dubai, showed your face, NFT, um, that investment, you flipped your money, whatnot. And of then course. now we're going to talk about the bad. Because as we know, in business, not everything Where there's good, good, there's bad. Where there's ups, there's, there's downs. downs. And yeah, your downs, those definitely some downs, especially you. <laughs> and one week they love you and next week they hate you but remember you get paid both weeks Yay. but anyway yeah we'll talk about the bad we'll talk about the first the NFT was there any was there any um, negativity from you showing your face or was it just straight positive was there anything like your it's just it's just yeah was there anything from that any bad feedback if there's anything, if there's yeah, nothing, I mean, it's cool. I mean, um, I'd say, I'd say that the, 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 the positives were just so overwhelming. Okay. The positives were just so, so overwhelming. Ah, so I'd say, nothing. I'd say, no, 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 no. I'd say the negatives is that now when people are negative, now people are like, oh, um, if I, I, now people know what you look like. Now people know what you look like and they're like, oh, now I know what you look like. If I see you, oh, them gonna, ones yeah, there. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. oh, if I see you, da 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 da, and, and stuff like that. Now people kind of like, yeah, people can recognize your face. And sometimes people will like, um, you know, um, they'll be like trying to send uh, threats and stuff like that. Or just, or just saying nonsense in my it messages. To everyone. It's and, not just you, just. and I think, if, and I think people would know that, like, if, if I was anonymous, people know you can't do that because I'm anonymous. You don't know who I am. You don't even know my name. Do you get me? So like, you'd have to kind of dig deep to find out who I am. But you know, when you show your face and you make yourself that public image in the, in the world, people kind of, um, yeah, people get comfortable and they say that. That's, yeah, basically. That's yeah, it's just okay, life though. Yeah, that. like what you have to understand is with every action, there's also an opposite reaction. And I think, I wish someone told me this when I did a lot of the things and we're going to go into how they kind of went bad. I wish somebody told me when I did some of the things that I did before, um, just the extent of what could happen and how things would be like if they go wrong. So for example, if I was to tell somebody who is anonymous, I would tell them that out, the, for me, the positives outweighed the negatives in the sense where being positive Positive showing your face means that people can relate to you more and it's going to be great for your personal image. However, people can also hate on your brand more and hate on you more. They'll hate maybe on your looks and they'll see you with this person. And that, that's probably one of the biggest things because when they start seeing you with this person and that person, when, when you're anonymous, you know, you know, they say, honestly, it's the truth. Private life, happy life. Yeah, and there's yeah, still yeah. some things that I keep private now. There's still some keys to be private now, which I don't think I'll ever show because it's just because honestly, what people don't know, they can't attack. And that's the biggest truth ever. So once I do show my face, I, and I'm happy that I did recognize that, that once I did start they showing did my show face. Everything. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, once I did show my face and the place that I go, I know that people can attack them. And, but I accept that and I'm happy for that. So when people do attack me, I'm like, cool. I already knew this was going to come. And I wish somebody told me that. So yeah, honestly, one thing I've just got to say is that understand that whatever actions you do take, understand the consequences that may arise from those um, from those actions, man. And, and be good. and be be content with them. Be content with them. Be happy for them. Understand. So now it's okay. So there was obviously I, I, I didn't know that you had some problems with you showing your face, but you definitely had problems with some investments. Uh, the bad. So yeah. you talked about he you giving the money, and you talked about you giving it to your friends. Has anything happened between you and those friends that you recommended the guy to? Yeah, as I said before, what went bad was he stopped paying me and, and whatnot and whatnot. And as I said, because 
as I said, because I gave that vouch after he 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 um and the contract. Yeah. No, no, because I gave that vouch, because I forget about the contract, because I get that that vouch, because I gave that vouch, some people, um, some people didn't sign the contract because they thought, oh, cool, I'll just go through him myself. I already know who he is. And some people, so, so, yeah, they didn't sign that contract and whatnot. And I'm like, all right, cool, then you're on your own. Maybe, yeah, obviously it didn't work out for them. So obviously you'll lose friends that way. Do you get me? Sim simple as that. Some people found out that you might have found out, not might, or they did find out that I was associated with that guy. And they're like, oh, you know. Um, to, to, to get myself, oh, you're the guy. Yeah, you're yeah, guy yeah, yeah. So obviously they're going to stop, stop being friends with me like that. But that's that. But I'm thankful for the people that understand business and friendship. I'm thankful for those. So one thing I'm there, be careful who you do do. Be, honestly, be careful. You, no, you know what? Honestly, money comes and goes in this life. Money comes and goes in this life. If you... If you already know that you're going to be making these millions regardless, then you don't think short term, think long term and be careful who you do business with. Just because it might be big, big figures. Sometimes you need to say no to certain opportunities, mm -hmm. even though it might look shiny. It's called shiny object syndrome. Don't get distracted. One thing that I preach hard is focus. You need to learn focus is an art form. You need to learn the art of focus where once you get focus, you need to remove distractions. And that's why I have another quote, which is feed your focus, starve your distractions. And I try to navigate and orientate my life where everything I do is feeding my focus. So I'm going to put things into place which are promoting focus. And I'm going to be removing distractions as much as possible. Because honestly, once you find that focus, once you have that vision, once you have that goal, once you know where you're trying to go, you'll be surprised to find that, that the amount of distractions that will come your way is unbelievable. And you need to not have that shiny object syndrome. If you know what you're doing is going to take you to your goal, if somebody else comes and tries to offer you a shortcut, do not take it. And I'm thankful that... Don't get into things that you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get into things um, that you don't understand. But I'm thankful that you know, did uh, did some contracts with those guys. I'm thankful that they understood. understood that. Yeah, they understood that. Did those contracts, uh, paid those guys back. Basically, I, ad I adhered to the terms on the contract. Whatever the terms were, we adhered to the terms of the contract. And we did that, man. And that's that. There's really nothing else to talk about that. It's just that's it, really. calm. Yeah, that's it. But I'll talk about the NFT project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about that. So yeah. we, after it sold out, now uh, we, had, we had to move on to the next stage of the, the project. The next stage of the project. Well, so what was it? Was, there, was that the... It was... Um, it was to no, no, this is what happened. So it was to release more NFTs. That okay. was the original idea. The original idea was to release more NFTs. But then we were looking at the market as a team. We all decided. Everybody decided that. Everybody decided that. The market isn't really looking that great. At that time, around the February, March time, the market isn't looking that great. But what was looking great is node projects. Yeah. So nodes were these uh -huh. passive income projects so we decided to go into this node project idea and um and we, we pumped money to it again we pumped money to it um our own money mind you pumped our own money back into those node projects and we i'm gonna definitely put some um maybe i might put some of the things up on here we, we 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 again as i said as i was saying before and i wanted to touch on it more how how hard was can you talk, you, i know you understand difficult and that's why i had to delegate yeah, it so that's why how, i had to delegate it did the guys sleep at all because i remember nah creating a project like that you don't sleep at all was it hard to keep you it? remember me at that time i was away wasn't it i don't know if you remember me at that. I, I would i would I don't be, remember that much, nah, we weren't that close that time but like but yeah we weren't sleeping put it that okay, way okay cool day and night yeah day and night working on that thing bro th that stuff's not easy at all, day and night, we were working on that, working on this, the behind the scenes, we we're trying to make this gambling thing and oh, wow. all these casino. things like that. Yeah, casino, and we want to integrate it into crypto and bro, yeah. Day and night was working on all that and cut the long story short, pump Time money gone, into- Time gone, money yeah. went. <laughs> yeah, simple as that. You know, you know them ones, in any project or investment, once the money runs out, that's it. Done. Finish. You, you can't continue the project. That's business and that's life. All business is the same. You know, look at all businesses you'll see. We only hear about the success stories, you know? Everyone only hears about the success stories, but I don't think people understand. Do you know the statistics say this, that 80% of businesses go bust. Of all businesses that get started, 80% of them are go bust. So please understand that whatever project that you ever will ever start, you, everything's against you. Everything against you. Whatever business you're going to start, it's all against you. Most of them go bust. In fact, this is the statistics. In the UK, 80% of businesses in the first five years fail. Wow. And in the next five years of those, so the 20% that survive, 
eighty percent of those that survive in the five years after That's they crazy. fail too. Wow. Everything is against what you to fail. So I learned from it very early on. You know, we live in a generation, a society where people like to people like to laugh at failure. Failure is is isn't you know as I was talking about earlier where we say over here in our circle where if someone fails we understand that it's a mistake and we'll uplift you up. Do you get me? It's a mistake. Yeah, we might we, we'll tell you where you went wrong, but now it's time to correct those mistakes and move forward. We got better. We live in a situation. We live in a society, and I made a little video about it where the most popular videos on the internet are cat fails. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're we right. live in a society where when people fail, we want to laugh about it. We, 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 we laugh about it, we it's smile true. about it, we talk about it. It's and true. that's just the society and generation that we live in. So when you see people fail, people want to laugh. Nobody wants to say, oh, you know, let's hear your side of the story or da 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 it, it, It's just want to fail. And another thing that I do want to also say about um, hearing your side of the story is another thing is that, one big thing that I, I, I learned, and we'll talk about what went ugly. Um, yeah, we'll talk about what went ugly. But I just want to just put a quote out there is that if anybody laughs at you when you fail, or if anybody stops being friends with you or stops associating with you once they see that you fail, understand that they were waiting for your failure. I think one thing is that when people saw me win, win, win after win after win after win, when that they saw enough. me fail, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they had enough. That had and enough. when they finally saw me fail that one time, well, they're like, yes, this is the we got it. We, we got, got it. it. Finally, you time to capitalize. But one thing you need to know about me is I'm never going to stop. So if you're w wishing on my failures, then please understand that I'm never going to stop until I'm dead. I'm not going to stop. So if you're wishing on my failures, then understand that A, I'm going to keep winning and B, you're probably going to see more failures. So have your opportunities whenever they come, wherever they might come. But for right now, you're going to still keep seeing us winning. But anyway, back to the podcast. Um, <laughs> that was just that was a personal <laughs> message. That was a personal message to, to, to those guys then. But as I was saying, yeah, you see anyone fail, they were just waiting for you to fail. So, yeah, they were just waiting, waiting for you to fail. And we live in a society where failure, failure is glorified. People get happy about failure. Nobody here is happy about, when, when I fail, I don't get happy. We've had fail, we don't get happy about it. It's time to reconvene, move on, and, 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 and go, go, go. And as I said, um, yeah, and go, go, go. And if, but yeah, I, I don't think the NFT kind of failed. I just think you got to learn a Big, big lesson. lesson, yeah. It got a big lesson. I don't think it failed because at the end of the day, you're not the only NFT that really failed. Facts. You're not the only business that really failed. Look at, there was a Luna, what happened to Luna? That yeah. failed. Yeah. And that was so much, that was one million times bigger than, than, than your it's thing. It's not even in comparison. Yeah, yeah. People, people lost billions or trillions Bro, or whatnot. I saw, I saw stories like somebody was once by house deposit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah, killed yeah, themselves yeah, yeah. over it and stuff like that. And another statistics, okay, we talked about 80% of businesses fail, but I think it's like 98% of NFT projects failed. Yeah. I'll put, Google it. Most, majority of NFT projects failed. And it's not because, mm -hmm. and it's not because of the team not caring. The team care, but just, yeah. number one, financial issue, you can't just put, you can't just pump and pump and pump, no. but if you don't get anything Yeah, you back. know what? In, 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 in life, you have to know when to say no. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I could have kept pumping, 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 but, but it just lost money. Yeah, lost, lost, lost losing money, 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 money. yeah. And time is money, like we said. Time is money. The it's not even that. It's the fact that the team, the team didn't want to stay. They didn't want to complete it. So we had unfinished stuff. Yeah, and and, and it time happens. Is money. It's, yeah. it's, it's business. Like, it's business. Just the business is what happens, really. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. And yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. here to explain That's it. That's it. But anyway, so so now we talk about the yeah. So we talk about NFT and oh bro, I'm brain for a fan. Sorry. Um, yeah. So now that you the NFT kind of. Fit, not kind of it failed. <laughs> Did you have any haters? Did you have any crazy, crazy, crazy backlash from social media or anything? And I know you, you stepped off, you had a break from social media. Mm. You had just stepped off of social media. How was that time for you when everyone, because the week before, everyone loved you. That week, everyone hated you. Everyone Facts. literally disliked you. And you jumped off of social media. And your whole life is literally social media. So what made you take that decision? Mm -hmm. And yeah. how was that week? The, yeah, the, describing that week, how you felt. Yeah, um, it happened over yeah, uh, yeah, a period of a few weeks. And as I said, my whole life with social media at that point, I can say that like honestly, that my whole life at that point, I realized I was infatuated with social media. Like my screen time's 14, 15, 16 hours a day. My screen, yeah, my screen time was just, so all my whole life with social media, wake up, post on socials, go to sleep, post on social media. Like all the time, it's just social media. And so everything was social. So when you have, 
and it's something I want to talk on. Um, when you have every, everybody liking you, everybody just supporting you, it's like, you, 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 it boosts your ego. You get a high off that. It's like, this is great. This is a good feeling. So all of a sudden, when everybody starts hating you, it's going to affect you because them got the same you, people you that like you. had love, love, love. Yeah, love, yeah, love, 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 love. And now they hate you. And I learned a valuable, valuable lesson from that. And the lesson that I learned is that never, uh, now I never ever let comments, good or bad, sway my emotions. Let me explain. So anytime people, if people show me, show me love, I say, great, thank you very much. Thank you for your comment, moving on. And if people show me hate, I say, thank you for your comment. Thanks very much, moving on. And the reason why I, I, I have this kind of mentality and I have this headspace is because if I see a positive comment and I allow myself to get swayed, if I see a positive comment and I go, yes, great. Yes, great. Thanks, bro. I'm the best. You said I'm the best. Thank you so much. When a negative comment comes and they say I'm the, I'm the worst, I'm going to go, oh, wow, I'm the worst. So I learned how to be, it's a word called stoic. So you need to be stoic when s certain words, uh, when people are saying comments to you. Don't make, don't get, don't be too, yeah, don't be too unfaithful. Have emotional be, control. Yeah, have emotional control of yourself. And then Key. That's this, yeah, yeah, that's um, one, of, one of the lessons that I learned when I came on social media. That's one of the big, big lessons that no, I learned. No, 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 when it, so one thing that I've actually been a mistake that I've actually been trapped into I used to be in social media a lot like you. I used to have like 12 hours screens and whatnot. You forget about real life. You forget, Facts. You forget about reality. You forget that real life forget, is real you forget life. You like there's actually people outside of those you, unknown bitmojis or whatnot. Bro, you, what you forget is that. You'll be, in, in, I'll be honest, this is how, like to describe it as an image. I thought that, I felt like I was on a stage and everybody's like throwing tomatoes at me. Like, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? Like everyone's booing at me. But when I came off, and you go into no, the oh, real what? world. No, where is it? Like, oh, where is it all? Oh, I don't hear where it. I'm not. Where is everyone? Where's all those people that are screaming, saying, blah, hey, hey, hey. No, we're there. I'm living, waking up, and I'm doing what I usually do, fam. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and that's when you have to realize that social media is not real life. Everybody they see on Instagram, showing a lifestyle, everybody, you, whatever you might see, social media is not real life and I can't keep saying it. Social media is a facade. Bro, even when I came on this, I came on this podcast with a suit. I don't wake up in the morning wearing a suit. You know what I mean? It's not the first thing that I wear. Social media is, is, is a facade. We come here, we look good because we want to look good for the people. It's all a facade, whether you're using it for good. And some people use it for bad. Don't condone that. I say we use it for good, but it's all a facade. Use it as, uh, uh, how, however you want to use it. But just under, understand that. Understand it's a facade. You have to just understand that it's a facade. Understand that it's not real. It's not real life. There's I've got a life outside of here. There's things that I do outside of here that you won't see. There's things that about me that he knows that... Uh, character traits about me things that I talk about that he will know that you guys don't know will never know about what goes on behind the scenes because we just know it as a facade we know how to separate and I think that's a good that's something that I really really learned I'm so grateful that I learned it the the the, the importance of separating the two separating social media it's social media time is social media time when yeah. it's real life time it's real, real life, life time, time. It's simple simple so why we behind closed doors not because people show too much nowadays people show too much of their own yeah. now I, I don't I don't like that I don't, yeah. you should keep yourself to yourself when you start showing everything, the people can attack you so much mm -hmm. easier. Be like, okay, we've done this. Or how about you? Know, what people don't know, they can't attack. Yeah, Simple. Facts, facts. What people don't know, they can't attack. And we have to, we talk about haters and that week and why you took a social media break and everyone is hating on you. I always just say like, there's never, it's never always someone better than you hating on you. There's always someone, not below you, but it's always someone doing worse than you. Bro. Hating on you. One. And... It mm. relates back to Dubai because everyone kind yeah. of is playing field mm. and everyone just loves each other. But here's so many classes and everything. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. One fantastic, fantastic, fantastic thing that I realised is that people who are doing better than you never hate on you. They always people, help you. They, they, they help you or they just keep people, it monotone. Yeah. They just keep it monotone. But people who are doing worse than you are the only ones that hate. One thing that I realised about hate is they either come from unknown accounts, I've never met them, don't know who they are, or they're on absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. They're not doing nothing better with their lives. But what I found out when I went through the bad of all these situations is that people who were doing better than me had nothing to say about it. In fact, they were like, bro, keep doing your thing. And again- You understand it's business. We, business, business. It's life. It's, yeah. It's business, it's life. One, one, some, somebody that I talked to said, somebody that, one person that I talked to said that, don't mind all these people 
that are talking about you, they've never been in the trenches. They've never, never. Lived, they've never been in the dog never. pit. You get me? Never, they've never man. been never, in the dog. Never. They, they've never been in this dog pit. That's why I'm. I'm so happy that I went through this because if I ever if they went through, what I went through, they would have given up straight away. They would have crumbled. They would have crumbled. Straight they probably would have. They probably would have crumbled. They probably would have crumbled. And yeah, everybody who do better than me, further ahead than me, like they'll just be like, oh, bro, like don't, don't even worry about it. Like it's just not. It's just life. It's business. It, it happened. Failures happen. You, there's nobody, nobody has ever gone through business and there've been success after success after success. And people are going to talk on your name. People are going to talk on your name and they're going to try and twist things to make things look like that. But you can't mind it. You have to keep doing what you're going to do and keep doing it. And that's definitely another thing that comes with, you know, having a name for yourself. And it's just something that you're going to have to deal with that. It, it's a quote that I put up. I put it up on my Instagram. Um, subtly that like, you have to understand that when you put yourself on this public stage, you, you, people can now, as I say, people can now attack that. Now you put yourself on that public stage. So anything that you review, I don't do business behind the scenes. Everything I show, people can attack that. People can attack that and they've got somewhere that they can attack to. People love, we're humans. I think it's in our nature that we, we want to point a finger. Like when people do something, when you see people do something wrong on the news, someone has murdered somebody or done something wrong. We have to point a finger to someone. Somebody has to get charged for the crime. You know, we have to. We can't just let people go scot-free. It's just mm -hmm, a human nature mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. So I understand it. Like I'll do the same thing. Something bad happens to one of my, I'm put. I, so we need to point a finger to so someone needs to take blame for this. Somebody, whether it was, and a lot of the time it might not even be you yeah, who yeah, did yeah. the thing, but someone has to take blame for it. And yeah, it's just one thing that I learned that we 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 point the finger at somebody, and you can't mind that. You have to keep. You can't let that stop you. You can't let that stop you from doing what you want to do. And I'm just so happy that I learned. I remember, that. in one year's time, two years time, no, everyone forget about this. Yeah. Everyone forget about this. Everyone move on. You have new people to talk to. You have new this. You have and, new and, that. And, and those who are not going to move on, that's on them, you know. That's on them. Cause that's on them. If you put the same energy, if you put the same energy in, from you moving on and it's your own life, you'll, you'll progress so much quicker. And, 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 and I, I preach that to the highest because I could have, uh, you know, been lounging about, depressed and sad, um, sad about my whole situation. And if I kept doing that, I would have been at Absolutely nowhere right now. I would've been be here, right? You nah. wouldn't have a studio, you nah, wouldn't nah, have nah. a team right now. And I wouldn't be, the future's looking where it is. I wouldn't have no, no, nothing that I'm looking at right now. But I took that energy. I took all my energy that I had from lounging. Uh, I took all that energy, all the negativity that I was receiving. Turned and all the positive love, energy. And I turned into positive energy and I went hard. Went hard, went ghost, went hard. And, and, and I can see that you can see the fruits now. You can see how the social media is doing. You can see the studio. You can see everything that we did. Everything, all that was just the work going on behind the scenes. You can Even never physically. beat us. You can never beat us. <laughs> you can, you never, can never beat us. us. Let's be real. You can never beat us. You can count us out. Me can't beat us. You can't beat us. No way. You can, you, yeah. And shout out to you guys too who are also pushing out. Remember, they can never beat you. All you, anyone else, you've been getting hate. Family. Friends, it's not just random strangers. Yeah, it could family, be your own family. Friend, it yeah, it could be your own family. family. You know, yesterday, um, one of my friends did a um was speaking to somebody um was speaking to this girl and she said that her biggest haters are her mom and dad. Yeah, and she said that that's she wants a to big, that's a big and thing. she said that she wants to put a the reason her drive, her drive comes from putting a big middle finger to her parents. That's what she wants, that's her energy comes from, not from anybody else. She wants to put a big middle finger to her parents. I'm like, wow. She's gonna be successful. She's gonna do, she's gonna do that shit. And, and 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 to her, I'd also say, don't listen to your parents. You know, don't listen to anything that they say. Another friend of mine, another friend of my mine, um, what, was was gonna go get an investment from an investor. And the day before they was gonna leave, her own father told her, you know, um, what you call it, don't leave. It's not good. And and if she didn't leave, she would have never got that investment. Mm. Qu quarter mil investment, you know. Quarter million, wow. you would have never got that. You, you, you get me from from one of the biggest world renowned entrepreneurs that the world has ever seen, and she would have never got that if she let her uh, her father stop her. So you can come from your own family. Don't listen to them. Th never let them know that they can beat you. Never, man. Prove That's them all wrong, man. everybody. And girl, prove that girl. Prove her wrong, man. That <laughs> girl that didn't believe in you, man. Although all my guys going through the heartbreak, man. She didn't believe in you. Keep going, man. Don't prove her wrong, man. Prove her wrong. Might not be now. Might not be in two years. In whatever, but prove her wrong. Don't, 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 don't watch. Prove Take, everyone wrong. Prove, prove, prove everyone, everyone wrong. 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 Prove everyone yeah, wrong. Man. Prove everyone wrong. But yeah, I think this is the end, really. I think we'll talk about everything. And yeah. Did we? You think we did? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that, I think that, that, that was it. Yeah, that, I think, that, I think, that. I think, I think, I think yeah, mm. I, I just want to add something because I know you look. Yeah, at yeah, me yeah. Like, I, I, um, well, 
Yeah, that that's that's that. Well, I guess that's me. I guess that's me, and that's everything that's happened to me. Um, a bit about my history, the good, the bad, the, ugly. the ugly. Yeah, that's everything that me that so I shared. You, you, you learn about haters. Yeah, you learn about what happens with NFTs. You learn yes. about investments. Yeah, you learn about university. You learn yeah. about. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. So yeah one day, like, maybe I'll tell my story. Big things are coming in store. Big, big, listen. Big, great guests. Big guests. Humongous. Comment, comment down what you liked about the, the, the podcast. Comment the kind of guests that you want to see. Me, big guests from everything. From the Wi-Fi Money podcast, you're going to see great things. You're going to see great things from all the different sectors of the Wi-Fi Money group. Wi-Fi Money club, we talked about that. Wi-Fi Money newsletter, make sure you're on that. All these things. Everything's going to be on our website below. There's going to be many, many things for everybody to see. People that like us, people that don't like us. You're going to have a spectacle. This is going to be a movie. It's not going to be like a live action movie. Grab your popcorn. Grab your popcorn. Grab your tango ice blast. Grab your tango ice blast (laughs) and enjoy the the ride. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. And we'll see you on the next one. See you later, guys. Peace. Wi-Fi money out.